Hello and welcome to part two of this mini series. If you have not yet watched part one, I will leave a link to it down below. You can go ahead and watch that. Otherwise, if you're just interested in this particular video, then I also hope that you enjoy. If you are new to my channel, hello, my name is Stephanie and I was a heavy new ager for seven years and I was completely invested in all new age teaching and doctrine and two years ago God saved me he pulled me out of the the darkness he brought me into his marvelous light and since then God has shown me exactly how big the deception behind the new age is and exactly how Satan is using it to deceive the masses and ultimately lead people away from the cross of Jesus Christ and that is exactly what I will be revealing and exposing to you today. Let's get straight into this video. It is beneficial to consult psychics, mediums, Reiki practitioners, tarot card readers, numerologists, astrologists, and people of such nature for spiritual guidance, healing, and answers. God strongly advises us that it is prohibited to consult those who engage in such practices. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. God knows the true nature of their work and is protecting us from opening up demonic doorways into our life, from being deceived, from being misled, and ultimately from committing the sin of idolatry because we are turning to a created being as opposed to the creator for all of our answers and our healing and our spiritual guidance. All those who engage in occultic practices or claim to be engaging with Angelic beings or spirit guides are instead working very closely with the kingdom of darkness, whether they are aware of it or not. And God does not forbid us to consult these people because he wants to keep us from the truth, but rather he is putting these laws and commandments in place because he does it for our protection. The kingdom of darkness is set up in a way to mimic God. But through a veil of deception, Satan does not want people turning to God for help, but rather he wants to lure others into his kingdom. An effective way that he does this is to present his ministers and such practices as positive, full of light, beautiful and radiant. However, the reality behind those involved in the occult is that they are working with unclean spirits who transform themselves whether they are aware of it or not. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. If you want to predict the future, you should practice the use of reading tarot cards, using astrology and astrological birth charts, numerology, mediumship, pendulum swings, and crystal balls, and or witchcraft, etc. Not only does God forbid you to consult those who practice such things, but he also strongly prohibits our own engagement in such practices and considers them all who do such things as an abomination to him. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Satan enjoys promoting practices that are abominable in the sight of God, which is why he has put things in place within the occult where he can interact with mankind. 
both on an individual and a global level to deceive the masses. Only God truly knows the future. Satan can only go off the things that God has already revealed to others, or he can cause things to manifest in one's life once they have engaged in such practices, for there are demonic forces that operate behind the occult. These practices allow the kingdom of darkness legal access into your life, and Satan can bring these predictions to pass to cultivate the deception because the individual has opened the door for the unclean spirits to enter into their life. Knowledge of the divine is obtained through mystical experiences, psychedelics, tuning into the universe, speaking to spirit guides, tapping into our higher self, reading channeled and new age material, studying Eastern philosophies, and so forth. True knowledge and understanding of who God is takes place through studying his word and growing in revelation of the person of Christ. Sure, nature can point us to the existence of a God, but to truly understand who God is, we must turn to scripture and allow the spirit of God, which is the mind of God, to guide us. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Satan does not want anyone reading the word of God, as this blows his entire cover, exposes his kingdom, and is the method by which people understand the truth about God and their power and authority over the kingdom of darkness through Jesus Christ. Satan has created deceptive channeled material to deceive people, about who the God that they are looking for truly is and reels them into a supernatural encounter with demonic spirits. Satan also uses false teachers to get people to follow a false Jesus, to teach a counterfeit path to salvation and to deceive people about the truth of who God really is. Wisdom is revealed to us through different gurus and spiritual teachers. God is the source of all true wisdom. And the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. He instructs us to be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. There is a big difference between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. Worldly wisdom is that which does not accurately depict the truth about God, his creation, the nature of life, and so forth, but rather refers to teachings of men that are fueled by vanity, worldly gain, prideful opinion, and a boasting of one's own perspective. Anything contrary to the truth has a weak foundation, and God is able to destroy that foundation in an instant, which is why he instructs us to be not wise in our own eyes. True knowledge and wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Satan knows that mankind is embedded with a deep desire to grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. However, he does not want people to satiate that longing with God's truth. For the wisdom of God is contrary to the way that Satan wants people to live and think. And it's also worth mentioning that I know not everyone has a hunger for the truth. But this appeals to those that do. Satan wants people to turn to false teachers to be defiled by them. To value the things that serve our own pleasures and not the things that honour God. Worldly wisdom teaches things contrary to God's wisdom such as the world tells you, follow your heart, whereas God says, your heart is deceitful, follow the guidance of God. The world says, do what makes you happy, but God says, do what is pleasing to God. The world says, do what you think is best, but God says, lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Spiritual protection comes from imagining white light around you, possessing the relevant crystals, cleansing the spiritual atmosphere with sage, and employing the use of smudge sticks. True protection 
from spiritual darkness only comes through the power of God and the working of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not need any aid, which is why the children of God do not need to turn to any occult objects. Demons tremble in the presence of God. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The name of Jesus alone has the power to make darkness flee. True healing and deliverance comes only from the power of God. And it's also important to note that you will hear a lot of testimonies from people who have had experiences of their soul being ripped out of their body uh, whilst they're sleeping, spirits, unclean spirits trying to rip their astral body out of their physical one. And it's only at the name of Jesus that that spirit was able to flee or they've had real demonic attacks whilst they're in bed and, and they're about to go to sleep. And it's at the name of Jesus that these demons flee. There's so many testimonies online about just the, the nature of the name of Jesus and the power that he has over darkness when nothing else works. It's remarkable and it is a huge testimony about Jesus Christ is God. Satan is not intimidated by any means of crystals, sage, smudge sticks, your own imagination and other occult practices. If an individual chooses to adopt any of the methods mentioned, then Satan may choose to give temporary relief to encourage the individual to keep trusting in a counterfeit source of protection. He does not want anyone to be in fellowship with God because that is when the individual is truly given the right weapons to fight the kingdom of darkness. Instead, he wants people to use objects that have no real power over him or that produce any lasting effect. There are many religions and many gods. Each are of equal authority and relevance. There is only one true and living God who created all things and who revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. All other gods are created by the kingdom of darkness through the minds of men and are operated by demonic principalities as opposed to God. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Satan has created false beliefs, false gospels, counterfeit religions and spiritualities, and a corrupt world education system that teaches atheistic views such as evolution to keep people away from the truth about Jesus Christ as the only path to salvation. With so many religions in the world, it has become confusing to someone who is seeking a relationship with God to find him. However, once again, he has promised to reveal himself if someone is seeking truth with their whole heart. The devil is not a real sentient being, but rather a metaphor for our shadow self, the dark side of our soul and our ego. Satan is a real sentient spiritual being that exists in the unseen. He was an angel of heaven named Lucifer before he was cast out and now rules the kingdom of darkness on earth. He was cast out because of pride. He wanted to exalt his throne above the stars of God and to be like God. And of course, it's only natural now that he is breeding his mentality in mankind. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. The devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He is a spiritual being that presents himself as something beautiful, a 
appealing and inviting. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan disguises himself in the world of the New Age to foster this idea that both himself and evil do not exist. This way, he is more successful at deceiving the masses through philosophies that are Luciferian in nature by promoting a counterfeit love and light without any alarming concerns for its true agenda. Satan knows that if people were truly aware of his existence and his nature, they would steer clear away from him and his practices. However, by keeping people ignorant, he is more successful at deceiving them, particularly by deceiving them that they are partakers of something that is beautiful and encouraging and fostering love and peace and unity, whereas it's just doing it in a way that is contrary to the truth. We are to desire love and we are to be peacemakers, for the peacemakers shall be children of God, but we are not to foster tolerance if we see that what somebody else is doing is leading them further away from God, if they are part of a deception, or if it is sending them to hell. We should not judge others for those who judge operate in a low vibration and are causing division and separation. We are called to righteous judgment. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Judgment is a healthy tool we are to use in order to try the spirits to see if they are of God, to beware of false prophets, to depart from evil, and to set no wicked thing before mine eyes, to name a few. Righteous judgment comes from bringing everything into submission under the authority of scripture and looking at things in light of God's truth, not our own personal opinion or according to appearance. We are to preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Often people take the passage out of Matthew chapter 7, where it says, judge not that ye be not judged, out of context. However, if you read the rest of the passage, it is evidently talking about hypocritical judgment where it states why beholdest thou the mote that is in thine brother's eye and considerest thou not the beam that is in thine own eye thou hypocrite first take the beam out of thine own eye then you are able to properly cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye now i know i didn't get that verse perfect but i did paraphrase a little bit but essentially that's what it says it would be hypocritical for me to try and address a sin in someone else's life if I have first not yet conquered that sin within my own life. God considers it a wise thing to judge righteously. Satan wants people to stop judging altogether because that way he can silence anyone who opposes the work he is doing upon humanity, not to bring his deceptions into judgment, not to call someone out for their sin, to spare their soul, and not to preach the word of God boldly. A lot of the time, people do not value truth and would rather live comfortably in their sin without any objections. However, as Christians, we are to profess the truth of God boldly for the saving of souls. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way and he that hateth reproof shall die. And I've just had another scripture come to me as I was reading my notes. But the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God. Pantheism, we are one with God, as God is a substance of all creation. God is separate from creation. There is a very clear creator-creation distinction between who we are and who God is. God is the creator of the universe who sustains all things. He is spaceless, timeless, infinite and immaterial. We are finite beings created by God to exist within the material world 
in a space-time reality. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. This merely cultivates the false idea that God is not someone to submit and surrender to, but rather we are one with God in deity and need to acknowledge our own personal Godhood. Satan does not want people to worship or serve the true and living God. He wants people to serve their own fleshly and worldly desires, which are influenced by Satan's deceptions. Our negative experiences can be largely attributed to karma that has been accumulated from previous lifetimes and therefore needs to be resolved. It is something to be embraced because you are stepping closer towards greater enlightenment by neutralizing your karmic debt. Often the blessing of negative experiences is that they ultimately draw us closer to God and bring us to a state of humility where we can cry out to God for deliverance. However, without God, the life of an unsaved person is heavily affected by the kingdom of darkness, for we are not under God's protection and provision. Sin has alienated us from God and his wrath abides on us. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Satan does not want people to recognize demonic oppression in their life as the works of the kingdom of darkness nor does he want anyone else to intervene on his plans in somebody else's life. He fosters the idea of karma so that it removes the alarming sense of need for deliverance and instead encourages the person to embrace their negative experience so that they do not cry out to God. Symptoms such as severe persistent headaches, nightmares and disturbed sleeping patterns, burst of chronic depressive symptoms, Increased anxiety, heaviness, and intense emotional fluctuations are all signs of ascension symptoms and should be embraced for you are transitioning into a higher state of consciousness. All of these symptoms are signs of severe demonic oppression and one needs to be delivered from them by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Unclean spirits take pleasure in tormenting souls. What greater way to torment a soul than by inflicting these symptoms while simultaneously brainwashing them as something beneficial and to be endured without seeking help or deliverance? Your thoughts affect your frequency and vibration, which is why you should refrain from saying that you are broken and full of shame, as this will only attract that reality. Rather, you need to foster positive thinking and speak positive affirmations over yourself and your life, such as, I am whole and I am complete. This is what will free you. God wants us to be honest with him and with ourselves and share with him our deepest struggles and torments so that we can invite him in and allow him to deliver us from them. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Without our Creator, we will always find ourselves returning to that deep void and that sense of unfulfillment in our life because we were created to have fellowship with God. Satan does not want people to acknowledge the true condition of their soul in a life without a relationship with Jesus. If you try and convince yourself you are whole when internally you are broken, then not only are you putting a temporary bandage on your wound, but it is the very mentality that prevents people from truly crying out to God for help and receiving true deliverance. The whole world is awaiting for the second coming of the Christ. Lord, my Treyer, 
also given the names the avatar, world teacher, or the fifth incarnation of Buddha. The world is not awaiting Lord Maitreya, but the Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming back specifically for his church, not the entire world. As we have mentioned, he will not be coming to bring peace, but to destroy evil once and for all and bring his church into the new kingdom. Satan has created a counterfeit second coming of an all-inclusive Christ, deceiving many into anticipating a world leader that is going to correct all that is wrong in the world, restore humanity and bring everyone into a state of peace. He will be seen as a teacher and guide to all people, deceiving masses on a large scale, encouraging others to embrace their own truth and seek their own path, leading many to hell. Awakening the Kundalini Serpent There is a spirit that lies dormant within each of us that, when awakened, brings true enlightenment. In order to awaken the Kundalini Spirit, one needs to meditate, bring all chakras in alignment and allow this serpent energy to travel up through the spine until it reaches the crown chakra and ignite our awakening. The only spirit we should focus on inviting into our lives is the Spirit of God, also known as the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. We receive the Spirit of God upon salvation. Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The kingdom of darkness has created a dangerous counterfeit version of the Holy Spirit and is encouraging the practice of opening ourselves up to the demonic realm and allowing unclean spirits to manifest in our life and even worse, into our bodies. As I said earlier, demons can work strategically together and can manipulate the environment to give temporary peace. However, the practice of Kundalini awakening does not teach the need for repentance, which is what Satan wants, and only brings more confusion and oppression in one's life because it invokes demonic spirits. Peace comes from stillness and meditation. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. True lasting peace comes from being in fellowship with God and having him dwell inside of you. The peace of God is unlike anything that exists in the world or that you can try to obtain on your own, even through meditation. Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Once you receive Jesus into your heart, he provides a lasting peace that does not require you to repeat practices or meditate for half an hour. It is instant and supernatural. Satan can only create a counterfeit way of receiving peace from stress, anxiety, fear, worry, and so forth. Any form of peace that you try and obtain outside of Jesus is not only temporary, but is so heavily dependent on excessive effort. In order to receive prophetic insight into where our planet is heading, we need to channel an invisible spiritual group of ascended masters or ancient masters of wisdom. True prophetic gifts that are from God come from the Holy Spirit and will be present in the children of God, not an unsaved individual. Most of what we can know about the things to come are already revealed to us in the word of God. God can also use those with the prophetic gift in the church as a mouthpiece to deliver specific messages. However, it will never contradict God's word. God has warned us, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. He also warned us that in the end days, which is what we are living in now, False Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Each prophecy needs to be tested first in light of scripture. 
God has also instructed us that we can mark a false prophet if their prophecies don't come to pass. Satan's kingdom mimics the kingdom of God. They have false prophets in the world to speak either according to their own imaginations or by demonic spirits, posing themselves as ascended masters or masters of wisdom in order to deceive the masses into a false direction. Currently, there are channelers in the United Nations who claim to receive instruction and guidance on the spiritual affairs of our planet through channeling different entities. These are demonic spirits who are deceiving the masses of a second coming of a false Christ and a false hope of peace and harmony on the planet for all in existence without any need for repentance or salvation in Jesus Christ, leading many to hell. Okay, that concludes part two of this video series. I hope that it was a blessing to you. I hope that you learned something. I pray that it convicted you if it needed to. If you are someone who is a believer and you are finding yourself practicing or believing in any one of the doctrines that I named in the New Age Lies, then I encourage you to repent, continue turning to God and his word, allow his word to sanctify your mind, to renew your mind and to deliver you from the strongholds of these new age lies. Do not be deceived by these doctrines of devils because they are deceiving the masses at such a large scale. Trust in God, trust in his word and allow him to be your guide. Do not fall for any doctrine of man or of devil. And if you are someone who has not yet been saved, then I encourage you to repent and believe the gospel. The time is running so short. God, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And unfortunately, so many people are being led astray by all of these false doctrines. But it is no coincidence that you are watching this video and I encourage you to repent get right with the Lord. It is the most beautiful relationship that you will ever have in your entire life. And if you are wondering more as to how to actually obtain salvation, I'll leave a link to a video down below that will hopefully explain it a little bit better for you. But other than that, I hope that everyone has a beautiful day or night, whatever time it is where you are. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you are interested in joining this journey. I'm only new here. However, I really love creating content and I'm so grateful to God for using me. This is all because of him and for his glory. So thank you so much and I shall see you all in the next video. Bye.